Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Iron Josh, and today we're gonna go over one of the most essential healers that you're gonna get in the game, Hexandra. Without further ado, come on, let's get into it. The story of Hexandra is kind of a cute one. Uh, she's a book nerd, so she loves the library, and you know, she's probably one of those girls that you could take and play some D&D &D with, probably get a cup of coffee with. Uh, she loved reading and studying magic in the, her great library, which they call her sanctuary in her story. Uh, you know, she actually stumbled upon too much knowledge while she was studying planar magic and got transported into another realm. And so there she sits and waits because she's trying to make sure that she gets back to her sanctuary while she's off in the other realm. The story kind of ends that way and she never really gets back So, from what it seems. Um, she's a human, she's a wizard, and she's a true neutral. And from what we can see as a healer in the game, I can, I can abide by those. Now, Hexandra doesn't rate very high when we come over to the copy of the Dragon tier list that you can get. Um, but, you know, she's a rare unit, so it's kind of hard for rare units to rate higher because their skills are kind of outclassed a lot. And as I'm learning more and more about this game, they get outclassed kind of quickly. But we're still in Season 1, so you can build her very confidently, and it doesn't cost you a lot of resources to do that. She's going to have a 4 in the Vortex, a 1 in the Goblin Slayer because you're just looking to do, it, to do a lot of damage, 5 in the Grave of Venom, 5 in the Grave of Curse, 3 in Rot, 4 in Heretical Rune, 3 in AB, 5 for the World Bosses, which is really good, only a 2 in the Arena, but if you're in Season 1, you're going to see a lot of Hexandra in the Arena, giving her an overall rating of a 3.6. Now, what you're going to see when we come on over to the book is it recommends HP and Enlightenment for her skills. I'm also going to recommend building her defensively as well, because in the arena and also in some dungeons, uh, you're going to want to put her in the mid, uh, middle of the field. I even have her in the front line of a couple of, my, of one of the teams that I was using. And so putting her as a, a, a tank isn't, uh, isn't a bad thing if you got the extra stats for it. Uh, Mirror of the Living is really, really good. I'm pretty sure I have mine on the Gospel most of the time. You're going to see here as we click into the abilities. Um, the ability that she's going to be using her ultimate with is based on the target's max HP. So that's kind of easier, right? Um, and then she's going to heal an ally by 150% of the attack and 1500% of the Enlightenment. It'll be easier if you just focus on the enlightenment part of this and the HP part. So I wouldn't really, really focus on getting your stats into attack very much. Uh, her passive skill is going to be when healing allies below 40%. Uh, with HP below 40%, the amount of healing is increased by 30%. Obviously, that's you know kind of standard. So uh, I have mine on the gospel most of the time because I have Megan using the mirror usually and then the three ears emblem hood is going to be one of the best ones you're going to put her on so make sure that you're just focusing on those earlier on in the game before you get your legendary feel free to use either either one of these the uh blessing hood or the other one there to make her a little tanky like i said all right and as far as gear goes i understand that a lot of season one people are going to be looking at this video so josh what are you doing man you're putting on legendary gear i'm season one can you please make this easier for me let me do that for you guys <laughs> i have two different pieces down here you have this one which is the blessing robe really really good hp and enlightenment focus on that one if you can okay get in as high as hp as you can and as much enlightenment as you can the gear that I'm about to show you from my set is not good gear, but it gets me through uh, a lot of the dungeons that I needed to. We're going to focus on HP armor, and like I said, if you can get in enlightenment and defense onto her, that's going to be what you're looking for, okay? And so I have defensive gloves because I do like to put her towards the front of battles sometimes, and that's going to protect your attackers. She's a healer, so you know. with that being said, you can get away with putting her towards the middle of the lines a little bit and just making her a little bit defensive. So we have on defense gloves and I have on uh, substat HP here. Now the flat HP is okay and then the crit damage and accuracy is absolutely useless. Josh, what are you doing? You're making videos where you're supposed to be teaching people things and showing them good examples. 
this is a bad example. I'm going to be flat up. I don't have good stuff yet. Like, I'm still only 45 days into the game. I've been farming a lot of attackers. Um, with this, with this uh, weapon, I have two rolls into HP, which is really good. One roll into resistance. If you're in the middle and towards the front, resistance isn't bad. So if you get a roll into resistance, you can work with that. And then one roll into attack percentage, useless. <laughs> but actually, her, her battle skill is, is based on 150% attack, so maybe it's not so useless. I don't know. What am I, what am I doing here? Uh, two rolls into crit rate on the hood, that's useless. <laughs> two rolls into HP will take you. Uh, no rolls into defense and a regular attack. Uh, there's obviously way better hoods you can get. You know, and like like I said, guys, uh, we're still kind of working our way through here. If I could, I would totally just do this uh, upgrade, but you know, we're we're, we're still getting through uh, the game as best as possible. For my uh, runes, we have defense rune up here with one roll into uh, defense percentage, one roll, two rolls into resistance, run, one roll into skill haste. Skill haste is still one of my favorite things to get rolls into or use on these runes because you can't get skill haste into equipment and skill haste focuses on getting your um your ultimate skill off and that is clutch because if you want that aoe healing you're gonna want some skill haste okay and so the next one is resistance once again it's for my it's for, for my sub stats uh, i probably have better ones here i could probably roll this one actually for the video let's roll this one guys We'll, do, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, <laughs> so we rolled two into crit damage, one into skill haste, and one into flat HP. Oh, not, not my favorite, not my favorite. But I tell you what, uh, I would lose a little bit of HP. I would lose some attack. I gained some D, uh, crit damage. I gained 40 resistance. Th this would be something for, like, I, I don't know, a tank. This would be good for, like, Horus, maybe, because he's a defensive guy, right? And so you get some crit damage on him, a little bit tankier, or maybe somebody that does damage based on HP. Like, Isolde, she, oh, no, Isolde's uh, fire. I don't know. I, I I don't have the units yet for this. Maybe Tower. Maybe we could use it for Tower. I, I Tower, like the, the cursed guy, right? Nobody seems to like Tower. Don't even bring up Tower, Josh. What are you doing? Anyways, uh, let's get into some teams. I'm going to come over to the Grand Gladiator Arena as an example. We're not going to do any battles in this video, but I did want to show you guys uh, maybe a good example. So let's just see. Um, we beat, okay, we already beat that guy. Let's just see. Now, I'm up there in Silver 2, right? As you can see, in Silver 2, we're going to find a Hexandra in here. Uh, let's see, Mr. Greggs. Greggs does not have one. Let's see if Scarlet Shinla has one. Nope. So, but the, but that's a good example right here. Um, in the arena, as I've been climbing up, we're currently ranked 28. So, <laughs> not going to drop that, you know, but whatever. Um, you're going to find Hexandra's in the arena. People are using her in Season 1. So, feel free to go ahead and use her in your defense for Season 1. If you really, really want to. If you're not focusing on the arena, she'll be fine, okay? We're going to come on over to the Grave of Venom. I'm going to go into lineup recommendation. Let's go into lineup number nine. Now, one of the things I'm going to be doing uh, in one of my future videos is kind of coming through with some units that you can kind of combine. And so you don't have to expand or use a lot of resources and spread out your resources. But you can focus on just a few, the fewest amount of heroes to build in season one because the game does throw a lot at you. There is a high learning curve. And so one of my goals is to just make it as easy as possible for people. You can see right here, Malaku. Uh, is using Hexandra, Migu, Hexandra right here. Uh, the top three, they're using Hexandra in the level nine Grave of Venom. So, I mean, if you want to beat level nine Grave of Venom and you're going to build Hexandra, there you go. As I get over here and I explore it to the Grave of Curse team lineups, um, you guys can always do this yourselves, obviously, but this is just for the video. Uh, she is not going to be in any of the lineup no number nines that I'm seeing. Maybe she is by the time this video comes out. You guys are looking into your lineups. But here's the kicker. If you go down to Grave of Curse 8, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so <laughs> once again, the top three teams in Grave of Curse 8 is going to be having Hexandra in there. Making it, once again, easy to recommend for the Grave of Curse. Alright, and let's check out the Grave of Rot together. Uh, we're going to jump right up to level 9. Well, would you look at that? In the top team, Hexandra. Um, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. 
Oh, maybe in the fifth or sixth team there, Hexandra. Again, Hexandra, 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 and finishing off Hexandra. Grave of Rot level 9, guys. So, so far we're 3 for 3 with seeing Hexandra, or 2 for 3, I'm sorry, seeing Hexandra in the level 9 teams, <laughs> and 1 in the level 8. Okay, so, I mean, are we going to recommend Hexandra still? Yes, I'm still giving her a 9 out of 10 to re recommended build. Okay, and let's check the heretical runes. We're going to jump right up to level 9. And is she in level 9? Oh, look at that. Our friend Kaldrasar. Right there. One. And then uh, Max Saker. Okay, number two. Oh, we're going to go right down three, four, five in the heretical runes. Like I said, guys, build your Hexandra. It's a safe unit to build early game season one. Okay? All right. Last but not least, let's check the Ancient Battlefield together. Ancient Battlefield is one that I'm struggling with, but maybe I need to build my Hexandra a little bit better. I don't know what I'm doing because I can't clear Ancient Battlefield 9 yet. <laughs> but I also don't have Furbath, so I don't know, man. Um, but there she is in the top three teams right off the bat. Uh, and, you know, these are teams that maybe a lot of you have. Uh, I still haven't pulled Garius yet, but I did just get my Resh. I'm pretty excited about that. But, yeah, guys, I give her a 9 out of 10 to build, okay? Um, she's going to be great in the Vortex as well for heals. And the Vortex doesn't have team recommendations. The reason why I only give her a 9 out of 10, uh, because I am a focused on the arena. And so when I get to the arena, uh, she's just easy to kill. And so she's a great healer, but I just find that teams that have her, I look for them. And I'm like, oh, well, as long as there's not two defenders and a Hexandra in that team, it's going to be an easy win. If they have one defender and a, and a Hexandra, I could probably go ahead and clear that out. So as an Iron Josh recommends, yes, she's a 100% build. I give her a 9.0 out of 10. Go ahead and build her. She'll get you through a lot of your dungeons. That's what a lot of us are focused on anyways in Season 1. Uh, and that's going to be a wrap, guys. A pretty short video for Alexandra. Um, you know, I, I, I really, really appreciate her as, as far as what she's done for me in the game. And I continue to use her as well. Until then, guys, I'll see you in the next video. And happy farming. Take care.